All right, welcome back. And Adobe has updated almost all of their photography cloud programs. So today we're gonna to take a look at the most important or largest update, which is Adobe Camera Raw. I will be doing some videos on Photoshop and Lightroom Classic as well, but really this is the biggest update and probably the most confusing one for new users. Adobe 12.3 is a completely new look to the program. There's not a lot of new features. However, there are some new features, but there's not a ton of new features, but the way it looks is completely different. And I don't want this to be confusing for anybody who's just watched these tutorials on how to use Adobe Camera Raw, and now it looks completely different. So we're gonna go over all the new features, the new look, where things are located. If you're used to using Adobe Camera Raw, you can find what you need to find and make this transition as simple as possible. Now, when you open up the new Adobe Camera Raw, you're gonna get these little disclaimer windows, and it's gonna ask you which version of this you wanna pick for your setup, now don't worry, you can always do this after the fact. Basically, you're gonna have a thumbnail horizontal or thumbnails vertical. I selected mine as thumbnails horizontal. And then the next one that you have here is just some information about what they have added to 12.3. Obviously, first and foremost is the new look. Then we have ISO adaptive presets, which is really actually pretty easy. I'll explain those. Local hue adjustments is not the greatest adjustment in the world, but finally they added it. Support for new cameras and some bug fixes and a few other little minor things. So we're gonna go ahead and clear this off because we don't need this and we'll get rid of this. So I've just randomly loaded up four images here that I've downloaded and this is the new look right here. Now the first thing we're gonna do is come up to this window. This is just a full frame window. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And now it's just gonna be simpler and easier to look at. And if you wanna get out of this, you could obviously just hit the letter F or you can come back up here and click this again. It will go back out of that. So that's the full frame view. First thing you'll notice is the toolbar up here is gone and it is now located over here. This is a new look here. We have the thumbnails in kind of this film strip view with the larger view. So if I click on this image, it's gonna view that one. If I click on this image, it's gonna view that one. So this new version. If you wanna hide this or change this, all you need to do is come down here and click on this and it's gonna be gone. Or you can click and hold and notice you've got the switch between vertical and horizontal. So if I wanna to go to vertical, I can click vertical and then I can click this. And now we're gonna have a vertical film strip versus the horizontal. It doesn't matter whichever version makes you the happiest or however you like to work, you can easily change that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and hold on this and then I'm gonna to switch to horizontal and we are good. You can also show by file name or by ratings and colors if you'd like to do that as well. The next thing that we have inside of the thumbnails is actually some information. We have a share button right here and we have the ability to come in here and change some information. So we can do select all copy settings. So if you wanted to apply certain settings throughout the photos, you can do that here. So you can rate your images. You can see right down here, we have some stars and it's pretty easy. You could also just come in here and hit one, two, three, and you'll notice the stars are appearing when I hit that. So if I hit four, five, zero, removes the stars. And so that's pretty cool little feature if you wanna use it. Truthfully, I'll be doing that in a browser, that culling feature. So this isn't something that I'm gonna really apply. But if you see those little buttons that what they do, right here is your share button so you can click on this and it's gonna give you some custom save options. It's gonna let you share these to different places. Now this is pretty cool and helpful if you're just using Adobe Camera Raw to tone your images and there's really no reason that you can't do that. It's just like working in Lightroom. They're exactly the same program as far as the develop module. This is gonna allow you to just go ahead and share here without ever having to open it up into Photoshop. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to the settings. So right here we have some settings dialog box. And so you can see right there is the settings and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It's gonna bring up this new dialog box. So we have general. Now we have different ways to set this up. So right now I'm in multi, meaning the edit panels, which are these over here, will stay open until you close them. We have responsive, meaning 
Camera Raw will open and close panels automatically to fit your monitor. And single, meaning only one panel window is gonna be open at a time. I'm just gonna leave mine at multi. You should try them. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. We have the ability to use the zoom pan function like you do in Lightroom. So if you wanna go back to the legacy undo shortcuts, which are Command Z and Command Option Z, you could do that in film strip mode to show contextual menu hints on hover. And I think that's helpful when you're learning this. So that means when you're coming over this, you can hover and it's gonna give you information. Next thing we have is file handling. I don't use DNG, but if you use DNG, you can choose some different options here. Handling of JPEG, Helix, and TIFF. So if you're not used to this, HEIC, this is what Apple cameras and cell phones are using now to take pictures instead of JPEG. We have a performance section. You can change any of this information here. Your raw defaults, meaning when you open it up, now I have mine set to Adobe default, and that's gonna bring up those Adobe color settings, which are gonna be Adobe Standard, Adobe Portrait, Adobe Vid, Adobe Landscape. However, you can change those to the ones in your camera setting or some custom ones that you download. And then we have the workflow. So my workflow, I work in Adobe RGB at 16 bits, and I like to have the resolution of my images opened up at 300 pixels per inch. I do not sharpen, and I'm not going to open as a Photoshop smart object. And those are basically the presets that we have. Go ahead and hit cancel, because I'm not actually gonna change anything. All right, so this is our new look. So right up here, we have our histogram. And if you highlight these, they're going to show you if you're clipping. So right here, it's showing you right there. We're clipping or losing our highlights. And this is gonna be for your shadow areas over here. This is for your highlights. And basically all this is doing is just telling you where you're clipping or losing information. Now we're clipping right here, but that's to be expected because we have these kind of bright white lights and to hold this detail, you're never gonna be able to hold that. So it's not the end of the world. Just because you clip sometimes doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. So right here's that profile that I was talking about. This is the Adobe Color landscape. You can pick these different versions right here. We have edit in auto or black and white. These over here are some sets that we have. And if you wanna try the presets out, you can come over here and select any of these presets. So I can come down here to artistic and click on these. And that's gonna give me that artistic set look to that image. We're just going to come up here and click black. So we have the profile, which got switched because I picked a preset and we'll just go to portrait for right now. Then we have the basic panel and nothing in the basic panel has really changed that much, but we're just going to go out of here. So we have the curves, the detail, the channel mixer, split toning, optics, geometry, effects, and calibration. All these are basically the same except for color mixer. And you're going to see right here, I've changed mine. It looks different. Normally we have this under HSL and HSL was the traditional color mixer that we had. And what it allows us to do, we go into hue and we can adjust the hues. We can click on saturation. We got that there, or we can go to all and all the different adjustments are right here. However, now we can switch this. And this is what I prefer actually is to go to color. And what this has is the different colors up here in these little circles. So if I wanna to go to the color red, I'm gonna click red. And now I have my hue, my saturation and luminance all together versus hue, just hue, 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 saturation, saturation, or just luminance. So usually when I'm working in a channel, I'm using doing a variety of these. And this is more like Photoshop. And I definitely prefer this version over the HSL. So I will be using this method from now on inside Adobe Camera Raw. A lot of the other stuff in here is exactly the same. This isn't too much of a change. This is the crop menu, so right here I can come up here and change aspect ratios or anything that I want. There is one new change here to the crop menu, and the change here is gonna be a control click or a right click into the image. So I'm gonna have a mouse that does right click, but you can control click on a Mac to do the same thing. And it's gonna bring up this little window. So we can easily change the aspect ratio like we could over here. We can change the opacity of the mask, meaning the part that's getting cropped out is gonna be at 80% opacity. 
we can show an overlay and we can show an overlay style. And the new style here is center. So I'm gonna go ahead and click center. And you can now notice that we have this new crop that shows you the exact center of your image. So as you're cropping, it's showing the inner. So if I wanted to line this guy up and try to get him exactly in the center, I can do that. Now he's vertically on this line. And to get to that, once again, you're just going to right click, go to show overlay, but in this case, we want center, and this is gonna be selected by default until you change it. If you wanna automatically bring up this overlay, you're gonna hit the letter V. So in this, if I hit the letter V, it disappear. If I hit it again, it's gonna show. So that's how you're bringing up your overlays inside Adobe Camera Raw. Here we have our traditional cloning and healing, so we can go to heal or clone, and we can change all that information there. Our adjustment brush, and we're gonna come back to the adjustment brush here in a second. We've got some graduated filters. We've got the radial filter. We've got red eye. We've got snapshots. So snapshots, remember, as you're toning or making adjustments, you can take a snapshot. It's kind of like the history inside of Photoshop. You can work on it, and then you can go back in time to various snapshots as you were working. And here we have our presets menu. And we're gonna go into presets, but I actually need to bring up a different window to show that in a second. So something that we have new is called adaptive ISO presets. And I will explain that here in a second. Right here, this is gonna bring up reset to open, reset to default, previous conversion, load settings, save settings, and set raw defaults. And that was that little window there. This is going to be your move tool. This is going to be a color picker tool. This is to toggle your overlay. So if I click this, it's gonna give you the grid and you can change the size of that grid up here and the opacity of the grid. I'm gonna go ahead and click that off to hide that. And we're gonna come back up here and I'm gonna click on the adjustment brush. All right, so there is a major upgrade and I can't believe it's taken Adobe this long to add this to Adobe Camera Raw but it is selective color adjustments. So before, when you were trying to make adjustments, we could come in here and we could go down to color, which we were just looking at. The problem is you could only make global, meaning when you made a color adjustment, it happened everywhere in the whole image, which truthfully isn't too helpful. So we're gonna come down here to the adjustment brush and we're gonna slide down and you're gonna notice now we have something called hue. Now they've changed the location of the brush. It used to be way down here at the bottom, which was sort of a pain in the neck because whenever you wanted to change your brush size, you just scroll down and get it. Now they moved it up here to the top so you can change your brush size here or you can just use those arrow keys like you did before. Now one really cool thing is if you open this up, we also have the feather, the flow, and the density and the availability to turn this on, which is gonna give you an auto mask and that's gonna help Try to find the edges of things as you select them automatically, but you can always override that. So I'm not gonna use it at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this window. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of select this big window up here, and I'm gonna paint that in. No, nothing's happening right now well, because I haven't applied an adjustment, but now you'll notice I can take this slider and I can actually change the color in that specific area. Now, this isn't the most exact color refinement tool. I really wish it was set up like HSL color. I'm not sure why it just has this weird little slider here, but it's allowing you to shift the different colors and change the saturation of that. It doesn't seem to have a lightness adjustment. We are getting some basic adjustments that, that we can apply specifically to an area using the adjustment brush. Now, if when you're sliding this, you can't get the exact color, we do have this, which is use fine adjustment. And now as you move this little slider, it doesn't adjust quite as fast. It's a slower, finer adjustment when you move this. And if you wanna go take that off, you can go back into it and adjust this a whole lot quicker. So that is one of the big changes to this. And this color adjustment also works in the graduated and radial filters as well. We'll bring up a different window here just for the fun of it. So for this image, we're just gonna go back up here to the global adjustments and I'm gonna scroll up, bring up the basic, and I'm just gonna make a simple adjustment here and just make this a little bit brighter so we can see what's happening. Now, down here we have some buttons 
And if you click on these buttons, you'll notice now we have some before and after views. So this is showing us what the image looked like before and after, and you can slide these and it will show you the difference. We can change this. So we can change the views just by clicking it, or as you can see, hitting the letter Q and then back to normal where it's disappeared. So right here, this button is to toggle the default settings for that. So we can toggle here and toggle back, toggle here and toggle back. And that's kind of showing you a before and after of what you've done as far as your adjustments. And it doesn't have to be one single adjustment. It will show you all the different adjustments. We can delete from the film strip as well. So if you have an image and you're reading it and you wanted to delete it, you could click here and delete it. Now you can see this image is now ready for deletion. The last thing we're gonna take a look at is for HDR and panoramas. Let's just assume that these images down here are all the same and we're either gonna make an HDR or a panoramic image with them. So I'm just gonna shift click to select these first three. And now you can see a new thing pops up right here. So first of all, we have some sync settings available. And if I click this, bring up the synchronized settings panel. But more importantly, if I right click here, notice now we have merge to HDR, merge to HDR panorama and merge to HDR and panorama set up right here inside of this little film strip look. And the last thing that we're gonna take a look at here is called adaptive ISO. Now adaptive ISO is really a noise reduction preset. So to further explain this adaptive ISO, the way this works is we're, we're gonna scroll down here to where we have detail and we're gonna open up this detail. Now right here is noise reduction. Normally when you apply noise reduction, every time you open an image, you need to come in here and apply some noise reduction. But what this adaptive thing does is let you set up a preset to make it be automatically changed depending on what your ISO is. So give me a second, we're gonna switch on over to this little diagram and I'll explain how this works inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Adaptive ISO presets work like this. First of all, what you need to know is this is a preset. You do need to save these and you're gonna need two different images for this to work. In this diagram, we have the same image. And assuming that the first image was shot with an ISO of 1600, the second with 3200, and the third was shot at ISO of 6400. If we set the first image to have a noise reduction of zero, and then we take the last image and tell that to have a noise reduction of 10. If we save the first image in the last image, in the adaptive ISO presets, what will then happen if you click the preset and the computer recognizes that that image has an ISO of 1600, it's gonna apply zero noise reduction to that image. If you have an image that was shot at 6400, it's automatically gonna apply a noise reduction of 10. And if you have 3200, it's gonna automatically apply the noise reduction of five. So that's how adaptive presets work. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.